Why not celebrate the very activity that you spend every day investing your blood, sweat, and tears in? When you listen to your customers, one of the greatest things that you will find is what their hot buttons are. To me, there's six pieces. Who, what, why, where, when, how. And I would suggest to each one of you in this room that you need to leverage your networks. If we don't celebrate, then who's going to? Now, jab. Jab. Oh, yeah, jab. OK, hook. You guys look really funny. <laughs> If you could take one thing home from this Building Bridges in Your Community workshop, one thing, it would be this. Know your audience and figure out how to identify their needs. And you know how you do this? I've sold over $5 million in doing this. You go back, you ask questions, you identify what their interests are, and make sure that you're communicating your message exactly to what they want, not your own perspective. For example, Brenda, if you go out and you say, you know, farming is the greatest occupation in the world and you just really need to understand this because I really believe it. Are they going to hear that? No. That's right. No. Whereas if you said, well, I understand that you have a need in having a positive image in your community and you might be interested in knowing that farming is the most highly respected occupation in the nation and that we would like to be able to connect with you. It all depends on what you say. Yeah. And how you say it. And how you say it, exactly. What would have happened if you had all come together, built, brought your resources together? Would your bridge perhaps have been larger and connecting more people? Sure. Yes. And did I ever say that you couldn't do that? No. <laughs> Can your community experience your vision? Can your customers experience your vision? Can others in the Kentucky travel industry experience your vision? When you look at the fundamental values of teaching agriculture, I know from being a part of agriculture education that the scientific, mathematic, biological, and all the other principles that are part of agriculture <coughs> apply to every single classroom that is in your high school. Every single classroom. There's over 200 careers in agriculture. When was the last time that you told a young person that? Have any of you ever looked into the eyes of one of your friends, of another farmer, and saw the sense of frustration and the fear of defeat? The absolutely fear that they were going to lose the farm that had been in their gen family for generations. It's a pretty scary industry to be in, whether you're on the farm or whether you're working in an allied industry. You see, I've seen those very eyes of fear, defeat, frustration, and failure looking back at me in the mirror. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm here to tell you that it is up to you, you as an individual, to fight that frustration to connect the pieces and to make a difference for our agricultural industry. Because if you in this room don't believe that you can do that, might I suggest that you probably shouldn't be a part of the world's oldest industry, agriculture. 75% of the consumers believe that agriculture does a poor or fair job of communicating. 75%. That's 75% of the people that are out there buying your products every day. The same Roper Starch study actually showed that consumers want to learn more about the technologies and the business of agriculture. Now, what are some other ideas over here, Marcia, on how you can celebrate agriculture? <coughs> Just by spreading the you know, good agriculture news to our customers. Spreading the good agriculture news to your customers. Great. Doug? By displaying good stewardship toward the environment. Good stewardship. That's a great one. The agriculture industry is going to change more in the next five to ten years than probably any of us have ever seen in our entire lifetimes. And anything that we do is not going to be able to stop that. But what you can do in celebrating the agriculture industry is to figure out where you fit as an individual person, where you fit as an individual Royster Clark employee, and where you fit as the Royster Clark company. Figure that out 
and accept the change, adapt the change, embrace the change. Listen, I'm going to tell you a secret. Listen, I'm going to tell you a secret. Ladies and gentlemen, you don't need an MBA from Harvard to figure out the greatest secret to selling. It's very easy. It's listening. If you listen to your customers, if you listen to your coworkers, if you listen to your volunteers, if you listen to your competitors, you will learn. Every time that you have a customer calling in to your business, think about ways that you and your staff can ask questions. What are you interested in? How can I help you? Is there a way that we can provide you with more services? What are you really looking for? Would you recommend us? I saw one of the needs up here that was identified was that our message will be rejected. I can guarantee you that if you know who you are talking to, what they are interested in, and how to talk about it, that you won't be rejected. Do you really believe? It was easy for me with that blue corduroy jacket because I wore the FFA jacket. I had it right here in my heart. In order for you to successfully connect your vision with other people, you're going to have to believe in it. You're going to have to believe in it very passionately. And every time that you talk to a customer or a key influencer or a peer, in some small way, share what your vision is. Don't forget to take the time to reflect on what's so special to you and to celebrate. I salute all of you. Cheers.